Well, we've uh, travelled with Ali on quite a journey. A little bit more to go still. And although we've created these three fantasy worlds, the reality is that uh, they do connect with the real world. Um, I can remember when I was a young adult having some questions about what, we, what is life really all about? Is it about, uh, is it about being the CEO of a, a major company and having that power? Or, or is it about having tons of expendable cash, lots of money to do whatever I want with? Or is it about meeting that special someone? They're mainstream questions, actually, that people do ask about life. A big moment for me at one point was uh, where I asked a big life question was walking off a stage. It wasn't a theatre production but an alternative rock band and as I came off stage one night very late I asked this question. I looked up to the sky and said, God, I don't know if you're real but if you are real, help me know that you're real. Reveal yourself to me. I'm a pastor in this church here. My name's Lee. It's lovely that you've come along this morning. But although that's my background, um, although that's, that's what I do now, rather, that's not been my background. My uh, family wasn't religious at all. Mum and Dad only turned up to church if someone died for a funeral. And uh, I remember as a kid talking with one of my little mates who did Sunday school. His name was Daryl. And I said to him one day, isn't five days of school enough? I can't believe you give up like a morning to go to a more school and especially religious class. I mean, how boring is that? Why do you do that? I just didn't get it. But a season came in my life when it became real. We've looked at three kingdoms today. The first kingdom we looked at was the kingdom of power. And uh, I can still actually remember... Uh, flying from um, England over here uh, to Australia and those long flights about 21 hours in the sky so it is a it's a long time and uh, you've got to fill your time up with something so I catch up on a few movies one of the movies I caught up one was Wonder Woman really cool I liked it actually uh, and, and so Wonder Woman discovers that she has this special power and she wants to use it for good but so often, like we've portrayed a little bit today, the, the one with incredible power actually wants to use it for evil. One of the best analogies of this, I think, is in Tolkien's book, Lord of the Rings, where he creates this image of one almighty ring, which will give the possessor of that ring tremendous power, but at the same time corrupts, damages, even destroys the owner of that ring. And uh, I don't know if you've ever read Tolkien's biography, uh, but Tolkien in his uh, middle years, Catholic heritage, but didn't do church. But then in his middle years, he came into what he considered a personal relationship with God. And although he loved fantasy, he moved away from thinking this concept of the baby Jesus coming into the world of being some sort of little fantasy, he came to believe it was a real Deal, that God really sent his son into this world and that people can know God in a personal way today. One of his uh, best friends was C.S. Lewis. I've been in the pub that they would catch up and have a pint and a meal and talk about English literature. I've sat in the same area um, in Oxford. And uh, these two prodigious intellects, both Oxford professors and a couple of other blokes as well, would catch up regularly and just talk about writing and the interesting thing is C.S. Lewis came into the same experience, Protestant background for him. He came to believe also that you can know God in a personal way. And of course he wrote Narnia, where the imagery there is of a lion in the first, first of the books and the lion is an image of Jesus. Well, Tolkien, is his, his imagery, he was actually influenced by what we see in the Bible. This concept of this one ring, this image of a great power that will give you many things you want but also will corrupt you, Tolkien deliberately was making an analogy between that ring and Satan, Lucifer, the devil. And in that analogy, he does paint a, a dramatic picture. Another great intellect, of course, in the Bible itself is a guy called 
Saul who became Paul. He totally was against this whole Jesus thing, not into it at all, and believed that this, this, uh, this false prophet needed to be stamped out. But then Jesus appeared to him, it's recorded, and said these words to him, I am sending you to them, to the people of the world, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. Here's this, this theme, darkness, light, the power of Satan, the power of God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified in me. You know, I wonder, is, um, is that what a real healer is about? One who has great power. Let me encourage you, take out those little cards that you filled in earlier, these little things. Pluck it out for a moment and jot in that first fill-in. We're going to race through these now. Is a real hero someone who has power? Jot that word power down. And if you think that's what a real hero is all about, tick the box. A real hero is someone who has power. Is that what it's about? The next kingdom we looked at is the kingdom of greed or the kingdom of money. And uh, I think we connect with this very easily because we grow up with it. I certainly did. I can still remember as a teenager, you'd see these, these ads and uh, you'd have some cool looking dude get out of a sports car. He had a couple of models either side of him. And the idea was if you buy this car, life's going to be amazing. Or it might be the posh car, you know, the prestige vehicle, that if you own this, then you'll have respect, you know. Or, or, or it could be the, um, the, the cool pad, you know, the, uh, the really funky place in the heart of the city with all the latest technology. Or it could be the house that is um, out in one of the expensive suburbs, huge place, luxurious furniture. But the concepts that we're fed by mass media is if you own this stuff, then... You'll be happy. You'll be fulfilled. You know, I've got a book at uh, home titled The Wealthiest Losers. And it's uh, about 12 short biographies about um, people with incredible wealth. Some had, had that wealth because of earning it through business. Some had the wealth because they inherited it. Others because they'd won it. Others because they're a famous actress and earned a fortune. But the interesting thing almost all of these biographies the interesting thing was that these people felt they had not found fulfillment that they had not found happiness despite having so much money they could do whatever they wanted you know jesus made an interesting comment on one occasion recorded in luke 12 15 life does not consist in an abundance of possessions life does not consist and an abundance of possessions. Was he right? I remember my uh, boss at work certainly didn't think he was right. <laughs> He's a Scottish guy. And um, I remember one day he, he, he uh, bought this um, book of Proverbs that he'd kind of have an open one for the week. And uh, they're often, often quite the opposite of what the Bible taught. Uh, for instance, um, there's a verse in the Bible that says... The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Well, his proverb said, the lack of money is the root of evil. And he believed it. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? Is a real hero someone who offers money? That's your second feeling. Pluck out your card again and jot that second word down, money. Is a real hero someone who offers money? And if that's what it's about, tick that box. One more. The kingdom of romance. The kissy, kissy place. Gross, says Zach, says Sam. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting, this concept of, of romance. We, we've um, grown up watching all sorts of Hollywood type of films and they generally have this concept of, you know, this very good looking guy connecting with this very pretty girl and uh, there is this physical attraction, this strong sense of infatuation but actually when you look at the relationship so often it's, it's quite shallow. 
And I think one of the problems is that um, that has so influenced us today, that is often the basis of marriage. And it may be one of the reasons that marriages um, just don't last like they used to. The chance of a marriage surviving in the Western world today has never been lower. And I think it's because of often the relationship is not built on a firm foundation. You know, we had a funeral here uh, recently. The uh, minister conducting the funeral was the Reverend John Smith. Some of you know of him from starting the organization God Squad, a Christian motorcycle organization, uh, which he commenced partly to connect with outlaw bikers and to curb some of their excesses and also introduce them to the concept of Jesus. Well, he was conducting a funeral here for a guy who'd been president of the Hell's Angels. Ball Bearing was his nickname. And this guy had lived to excess, done a lot of, um, well, can we say, uh, stuff that was uh, pretty shadowy affairs, had lived life to the full, but John Smith uh, shared that in the latter portion of his life, that he believes Ball Bearing had come to realise that all the, the money, the women, you name it, it didn't satisfy and Smithy said that he believes he'd just come to faith in Christ in that latter period of his life. John Smith also tells a story about another chap who really felt that he had something he wanted to tell the world, not someone who was a, a speaker as such, and so he thought he'd do something different. He went down to the heart of Melbourne, and this big burly biker, with his leathers on, put on a pretty little wedding veil, and he held up a simple sign and it said this, don't try and get from your missus what you can only get from God. And uh, people would come up to him. Sometimes they'd just, they'd just make a brief comment. Yeah, you're right, mate, she didn't deliver. Other times they'd get into a conversation with him. And as they talked, he would say this, what I've discovered is that every person has a God-shaped void. We try and fill it with all sorts of things, money, sex, relationships. But you know what? It never satisfies because there's a part of us that's spiritual. And unless God fills that part, you're always searching for this elusive reality that you'll never find. That was his message. I don't know. Is a real hero someone who offers romance? Is that what it's about? Do you want to just tick that last uh, that box if that's what you think? Jot the word romance in for that last one. Is a real hero someone who offers romance? You know, the, uh, the prodigious intellect, the Apostle Paul, he writes a definition of love guided by God. He says these words, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love is eternal. The Bible definition of love is much broader or deeper than just infatuation. That sort of concept of love could last. It's kind of a selfless love, really. And Jesus on one occasion said these words, John 15, 13, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus wasn't just giving a little poetic phrase here. He actually meant this. He explained that the time would come when he would give up his life for the people of this world. And claiming to be the Son of God, the divine Son of God, he said that the time would come when he would die on a Roman cross. But that that death was significant. It was supernatural. That in a cosmic way that isn't easy to explain, that he would bear the sins, the shortcomings, the failings of humanity, all the things that separated them from a relationship with God. And through that 
death, that anyone who comes to believe in him could know God in a personal way. And Jesus being divine, being beyond time, could make that single event in history affect the past, that time, the future, and into our future. A timeless event. When talking to a religious leader, Jesus said these words, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life life jesus calls people to believe those truths to discover a relationship with god do you have that relationship i'm not talking about a bit of religion i'm talking about knowing god in a personal way do you do you have that do you know that do you do you have that experience of actually knowing god i'd like to lead you in a prayer if you'd like to know god in that personal way quietly in your heart Would you pray this prayer? Let's bow our heads in respect to God just for a moment. Simply pray these words. Father in heaven, I do believe you gave your son Jesus to be born as a little child in this world, to leave the throne of heaven, to be made into the form of a baby, and ultimately to live a life which was a great example for us to follow. God, your son, gave his life to serve others, healing the sick, teaching the confused, feeding the hungry, and ultimately gave his life to die on a Roman cross. Jesus, you are the hero I need. I accept your sacrifice. Amen. Now, finally, friends, if um, you prayed that prayer today, why don't you let us know? Tick that related box on the card that says, Today I acknowledge Jesus as the hero I need and accept his sacrifice. If you've prayed that prayer today, you're wanting to know God in that personal way, why don't you tick that box? Let us know. And finally, let me mention to the Alpha course. Like was said earlier, about 30 million people have completed Alpha. It explores the meaning of life. It's got interviews from people all over the world, some of them quite famous, you'll know some of them. As they look at What really makes life worth living? And as we've mentioned, it explores this concept of, is Jesus real? Can you know him today? I'd love you to do the course. We're starting it in February next year on Thursday nights. If you're interested in uh, the Alpha course, just check out the first one if you like and see what you think of it. Tick that Alpha box as well.